Good evening. We're going to spend a large part of Panorama tonight looking at television, at BBC television, because ten years ago this week, the BBC television service opened up after its long shutdown during the war. Now, do you remember, I wonder, the first ever television service transmitter up at Alexandra Palace, which started its service in 1936 and continued until 1939, and then after the war came into service again. It was just six months after the war when BBC engineers, by a piece of real hard labour, reopened the service. June 1946. And in those days, there were only two studios. And we now, with our outside broadcast cameras actually at Alexandra Palace, go to one of those two studios. Studio A. It looks a bit different as we see it through the Alexandra Palace camera tonight. This is a studio that those who've been in television a long time have many happy memories of. The notices on the walls, the producer's window up in the corner there. A small studio which has seen a great deal of television history. And now is filled with the apparatus for experiments in colour television. This is the colour television centre. There's something I bet you've never seen before, a colour television monitor. And here, the past and the future together. The little original Emitron camera on the left that we used to use all those years ago and on the right one of the new monster colour cameras. And then if we go down the corridors, it were, <coughs> to Studio B, which is even smaller, this is now the new studio. It was here in 1936 that Baird Television was operating. Now, they're getting ready for the half-past ten news. Kenneth Kendall there is going to be the announcer, getting some last-minute information, and the news staff ready for the 10.30 bulletin. And that old Emitron camera back in Studio A, by the way, looks a little bit uh, primitive these days, doesn't it? And even more so when you take the top off and see the works. One rather shaky-looking tube strapped to a box underneath. But it gave John and Ellie 20 years of very good service, and some very popular programmes were transmitted with those cameras from this studio. I can remember one called London Town that I remember with, with great happiness. Now the big camera next to this, the colour camera, is really three cameras in one. This is the biggest and most complex thing you ever saw in your life. You are really looking at the future now in this machine. I think in a way it's very fitting that the studio used for early experiments in television and early programme service should now be the studio where they're planning the future. It is indeed very, very different these days, not only because nowadays there are uh, millions of viewers instead of only scores or hundreds of thousands, but because of the apparatus. Those of us who work on this side of the camera, for example, see new gadgets around us. And when the service began to develop, one of the things we noticed most was this. I'd like to show it to you over here the development of what was called a turret on a camera. That meant that the original cameras, of course, if they wanted to come closer to you or further from you, had to actually move in and out. Now, then they started fitting these things. This is one of the early turret cameras. And if you're a photographer, you'll know what happens. You spin the turret round, change a lens without moving the camera, and bring the subject you're looking at nearer or further away. We might perhaps demonstrate a camera too. You're looking at me now through camera two. If I get you to do it for me, would you now spin your turret and go to a close-up? Horrible sight, but there you are. That's a close-up without my moving at all, or you. Now spin to a long shot. And there you have a long shot. You can see much more now than you could before in the close-up. You haven't moved, I haven't moved, but it's happened. That's a turret. That's an old camera. We've got something very, very new about to come into service. The, the cameras that you're using tonight on this program and you are looking through at home, are themselves about to go out of service, and this is coming in. Would you bring it here? <coughs> now, this is the 
very latest thing. This is the cat's whisker, but rather far removed from cat's whiskers, turrets and all, which is about to come into service in the studio. I wouldn't be surprised, though, you know, if, if turrets themselves don't disappear one day, because we now use largely on outside broadcasting, though I did notice it being used in the Jack Benny show last night, if you remember, um, what is called a zoom. With this, you can fly over people's heads without the camera moving at all, and what is far away suddenly becomes right up close to you with the aid of this apparatus here. I'd like to show you an example of how a zoom is used, which we took from a tele-recording of the Trooping with Colour, the Queen's birthday last week. A moment when we went suddenly from one side of Horse Guards Parade, there it is, as though we were flying over the heads of everybody, close up now to the Guards Memorial on the other side and close up to the Guardsmen. And nobody had moved at all, and yet suddenly you were very near something that you were far away from before. Now, this Zoom is much used by outside broadcasting. We might perhaps have a look at some of the developments in outside broadcasting now. Oh, one thing before we do. Um, here is a man by name Alfred Wormser, who has been making for years for television these animated captions, which we use a great many, hello, and uh, which are now so, so much used that they're no longer called captions, we call them Wormseries. So we'll now look, Alfred, at one of your Wormseries, which will show us developments in OBs. Rather an interesting figure. 1946, one transmitter and two OB units, outside broadcasting mobile units, that is. And then 1956, 14 transmitters all over the country, four outside broadcasting units in London, five in the regions, not to mention the roving eye, which, of course, can go almost anywhere. In fact, um, uh, mobility is one of the great features of OBs these days, and mobility which isn't even dependent on lines or cables, as OBs used to be in the old days. They now can send programs by microwave from mountaintop to mountaintop. This we call in the trade a dish. Very good word for it. It receives a picture, it shoots it over the mountains, and is picked up somewhere else and relayed. So you can now do programs from almost anywhere. I, I'm being associated myself in a week or two with a program coming from a submarine under the water for the first time, and another one coming direct from the island of Sark in the Channel Islands. That's typical of what one can do nowadays. 